designed this trial called the Dawn trial, uh, which the goal was essentially to expand the treatment window from this stringent time window that you currently have, zero to six hours, to incorporate uh, patients that could be treated as late as 24 hours. Obviously, it, uh, you, you can't treat all patients. These are uh, patients that are selected based on, on imaging and clinical uh, stroke severity. In reality, uh, what you're looking for is for a, for a mismatch. So you want patients with high clinical severity and a small stroke size on imaging. For the purpose of the trial, because you need to standardize the approach across different centers, you use a, a automated CT perfusion software or MRI DWI with automated volume calculation. I think as you incorporate this more in clinical practice, practice you're going to have to study a little better what are the boundaries of that and uh, as whether or not you can expand this to even like non-contrastity patients. So I think this was the, the first step in a much longer process of better understanding the, the selection process in this extended window. The trial, uh, it ended prematurely. Uh, we, we had uh, our initial sample size was 500 patients. Our first futility, ana futility analysis was at 150, and efficacy analysis was at 200. So when you had 200 patients enrolled in the trial, the DSMB met, they look at the interim results, and they uh, request us to stop the trial because you had cross our pre-specified uh, success uh, boundaries. Um, so the trial was stopped based on the 90-day uh, outcomes. The results of the trial are uh, quite definite. I mean, it, it really, we, we found like an overwhelming difference between the two arms of the trial. Uh, to give an idea that the treatment arm had about 48% uh, rate of uh, good outcomes of independence at 90 days. The control arm had just 13% rate of good outcomes. So this difference translates in the highest treatment effect ever seen in a reperfusion trial, even when you compare with IVTPA trials and the previous endovascular trials that were done in the earlier window. Uh, obviously, in order to change guidelines and clinical practice, you want more data. Uh, what you also did is you studied the, the population of the trivial registry okay, that uh, enrolled over 2,000 patients. Out of these, approximately 900 patients had proximal occlusions involving the intracranial ICA and the MCA M1, had an NIH stroke scale equal greater than 10, and a baseline modifier rank scale of 0 to 1. So very similar population to the Down trial. And we look at the outcomes on that patient population, it was actually very similar to the down trial. Approximately 50% of the patients were functionally independent at, uh, at 90 days. So this kind of externally validates the results of the down trial. There is a, a second trial called the Diffuse 3 trial, which is an NIH-sponsored trial um, that uh, was just stopped. Uh, and they are performing interim analysis. We are very hopeful that those results are going to be in agreement with the Dawn trial. In this way, you're going to have yet more evidence that uh, it's safe and efficacious to treat patients in this expanded window. We also plan to do a meta-analysis incorporating some of the patients in the previous trials, uh, like Revascat, treat patients beyond six hours, six to eight hours, and ESCAPE actually treated patients all the way to 12 hours. So we're hoping to do a meta-analysis of all these trials to, again, conform in a larger sample size the results we've seen in Dawn. So the next steps is really to reorganize uh, systems of care around these new findings. And uh, it's, it's very important because so far you have uh, negated treatment to many of these patients that arrive to the hospital after six hours from time last seen well, including the wake-up stroke population, which is a very important uh, population. As, as you can imagine, you sleep for about a quarter to a third of the day, so uh, your chances of having a stroke during sleep are not very low. In fact, 20 to 30% of our strokes are wake-up strokes. And because they typically 
come to the hospital after six hours from times lasting well, there wasn't really a good treatment option for those patients. We also feel this new window will open up the opportunity uh, for treatment in other areas uh, uh, where patients have more difficult coming to the hospital early. Again, time is very, very important. Uh, what this new data is bringing to us is that we may be able, we actually it looks like you're definitely able to help some of these patients that come at a later window.